Um, I realized, you know what, I need to cast some face at Pro League, man. This this just needs to happen. So a bunch of really big names in this one. Um, I'm super, super, super stoked for uh, this game to get underway. And we'll take a look at what we got right from the beginning. Um, Shadowfiend banned out. I, I think that there's a... Uh, He's just, he's a hero that can completely snowball out of control and pretty much can continually catch up, even if he ends up getting shut down a little bit in lane. So he has the potential to snowball out of control, but also on top of that, if your supports are playing well, and they should be if you're playing in this league with very high skilled players, um, you're going to be able to catch up through jungle stacks, you know? So a really, really solid hero, uh, very safe pick, and gets banned out there right from the beginning. We also see a PL banned out, as well as a Bounty Hunter, and then a Leshrac. So a lot of the fairly normal bans out from the very beginning. Um, we also, I, I think that Bounty is one of those heroes as well that like, I've talked about it before, but in the, the current meta, you know, you do have a lot of drafts that are built around trying to win lanes very hard. And, um, a lot of the reason for that is because you end up getting into a ton of skirmish skirmishes in the sort of early stages of the game, um, and Bounty Hunter can really accelerate your gold gain through that track. So um, already the pick's coming fast and furious, oh my god. Uh, so Tusk, Queen of Pain, Lena, and then an Anti-Mage. Um, very interesting. I, I'm going to be curious if this Lena is going to be played in that mid role. Um, obviously can also be played in that support role, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because I feel like we've been seeing Lena more often now put into that support role uh, with the a little bit of the nerf that she got. Not a huge one off the back of the Aghanim Scepter, but really I think the bigger one was the... the um, the nerf with how Yules interacts, having that increased mana cost. And I think that just being able to uh, instead run her in a support role with another, you know, uh, another hero that can set up a stun, I think, you know, a Shadow Demon or a Rubick or something else like that. Uh, at level one, it's super duper value. You know, you get 120 damage out of it. You get a 1.6 uh, second duration on that stun as well. If you uh, couple that with a Rubick lift as well, that's 2.6 seconds of duration uh, for disable if you end up timing that out perfectly with the lift as well as the light strike right hitting so um, I'm curious if that's what she's going to be run at and if that is in fact what it's going to be that coupled with a queen of pain rotating through a jungle um, is really going to be able to gank very effectively the dazzle isn't like the best setup for a stun but um Poison Touch being able to slow somebody down also would be really good so Lena's probably going to want to get a uh a Yule Scepter this game, unless she's being run in that, well, even if she was being run in that core role, she's still going to want to get a Yule Scepter, but we'll see if this ends up being a Queen of Pain in a, uh, in either the safe or the off lane, or if it's going to be played in the mid. I imagine at this point it's going to be played in the mid, but, uh, still could be surprised by that. We'll never know. Um, Tusk as well as an anti-mage here. Uh, I think that Tusk is really just, uh, he's the ultimate u utility hero in my eyes. Um, so many different things that she that this this hero can do you know you got a little mini fissure here with the ice shards you've got the ability to save or a great initiation um you've also got the sigil which completely you know disrupts the way a team fight can move uh, a team fight can go in terms of the movement slow as well as the attack speed slow and then walrus punch a great disable as well as a, a, a huge nuke um you know it's really really solid and then anti-mage of course um with arteezy playing in this one i have a feeling that he picked his own hero second here wanting to make sure that he was able to secure that and we're waiting a little bit longer for this third pick here lich really very interesting i'm curious to see what this ends up being uh, and why he chose this hero. Very, very interesting indeed. So we also have a Witch Doctor band out as well as a Zeus, um, Undying, and Shadow Demon. And to me, a little bit what this looks like is that they're trying to, again, ban out some of these heroes that aren't quite as good at fighting in the, uh, in the mid game. And I think that this... At least in my eyes, these are a bunch of very high damage heroes. Um, Witch Doctor also with Cask and Maledict can really completely disrupt the fro the, the the sort of the the middle of a team fight. Ooh, Drow Ranger, that's that's a pretty cool pick right here. Um, I like this because the thing that's going to be cool about this, and the thing I'm curious about, is if this Drow is going to end up going for like that several Wraith Band build um, on into something afterwards, but just to give a little bit of extra damage and push in that sort of after immediately following the laning stage, because already you've got several pretty hard-hitting heroes. I mean, Dazzle's right-click isn't anything to sneeze at. It's, it's strong. 
Um, so there is a lot of potential here for uh, dealing a, a good amount of damage early. Now the only trouble that they're going to end up having is that they don't have too many disables, so probably going to have to itemize to uh, to ensure that that happens. Queen of Paid with a, probably going to have to get an Orchid this game. Um, that being said, it's a little bit worse because you know that Anti-Mage is going to go for a, uh, a Manta, and I think that, well, I, I don't know why I was going to say that, but Tusk, <laughs> Tusk Snowball, it doesn't really matter if it disables Orchid or not because because if you're orchided, you can't snowball. Um, but he could pick somebody up who is who is orchided as well. So I don't know if it's actually the best orchid game for Queen of Pain. It might be better just to go for like straight eggs, um, or maybe even like a Yules or something funky like that. Um, we'll see though. Shadow Demon banned out as well as Undying uh, down here for the Radiant. Um, Two sort of, you know, midly heroes again. I, I think that the Shadow Demon Lena combo is pretty strong, but I don't. I think that I, I think that actually, now that I'm saying this, I don't think that this is going to be another support that they're picking up here. I have a feeling that we're we're going to be seeing next is an off lane uh, out of the dire, but we'll see. Naga Siren as well is going to be picked up here. Um, I'm imagining that this is going to be a Naga support, and this gives them even more ability to fight in this early game. You know, you've got the ability to engage and disengage with Song. Um, and with all of this burst damage as well, I, I think that that's going to be really, really effective. Um, what else do we have here? I mean, Ensnare is an absolute great ability to pin somebody on down. Um, it says it's also places preventing movement or blinking. Exactly, that's the thing I was thinking about. So Queen of Pain going to have a little bit of a tough time. I, I think that this is pretty cool here. Um, I, I like this pickup of the Naga Siren here to deal with the Queen of Pain as well. Um, also, Lena is one of those heroes that you occasionally get a Blink Dagger on, but it doesn't really matter there anyways. Um, and also the fact that we've got two different blinking heroes in this game, it's good to get one of them down first. Um, so we'll see what Dyer ends up going for next. I think a form of control, I think an offlaner, um, clock is still in the pool. I don't know if it's the best clock game. It, he, I mean, he's pretty good against Lich. Against Tusk, it's a little bit tough as well. Um, Anti-Mage, it's a little bit tough as well. Naga Siren, it's also a little bit tough. I don't know if it's the, if it's a good clock game. Um, I think that maybe Tidehunter could be okay here. We'll see. Banning out the Storm Spirit next. Um, I think that that is a hero that would definitely mess with this lineup a whole hell of a lot. Uh, and having him out of the pool uh, uh, helps a good deal, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you do end up throwing that uh, that Queen of Pain in the mid lane, um, which I think is what they're going to do here, then you've got a situation where she can probably shut down Storm. But based off of the fact that we don't have a ton of push yet, Dazzle can keep a lane pushed out, but he's not great necessarily at pushing the lane. I, I guess Weave actually is pretty solid for it, being able to tank ta uh, towers significantly longer, but that's just one hero out of all of these. Drow Ranger can take down towers somewhat effectively. Anti-Mage is going to be able to take him down. Um, I, I have a feeling, though, that we're going to be in, in for a little bit longer of a game. Avadon, really? Okay, all right. So maybe they do a lane this. Um, we'll see, but this looks to me like it's going to be an ABBA core. Very, very interesting. Uh, Spearbreaker banned out here as well. I think that that was a good ban. Um, that would have been really, really strong with this whole lineup right here. And we're going to pick up a last. So going to be a very, very interesting uh, lineup here in terms of how they both laning this as well as how this magnet. Magnus does against the Queen of Pain in the mid lane, which is where I'm assuming this is going to be. Um, but you never know. We will see, we will see. And in the meantime, I am going to uh, take a quick little drink of my tea. Arizona iced tea this time around. Woo! Oh, it's delicious. K delicioso. I am super excited. So... As we're just getting on loaded into this game, um, you know, we've been, we're hanging out, we're having a good time. It is currently a Monday night, is that right? Yeah. Tomorrow is my day off, so probably going to be staying up for a while tonight, casting a whole, whole bunch of FPL. Um, very, very excited about that. I haven't gotten a ton of chances to cast. 
it's always good when you get a few more uh, seconds on in there to do some Dota. Maybe I'll play some Dota afterwards as well. Uh, oftentimes when I play in, or cast these leagues, I end up really wanting to play a game like immediately afterwards. So we'll do a quick little introduction of all the players before I get sidetracked again and start talking about my week. <laughs> We've got Just Arteezy. Mr. Arteezy himself is going to be playing the Anti-Mage there with quite a slick little mohawk. Gotta be said, look at that little mohawk. That's not a mohawk. Ponytail, that's the word I was looking for. We've got Omega Power, who's going to be playing the Magnus here. We also have Pandago, who's going to be your Lich. Looks like they're going to be doing potentially an aggressive trialing here. Very interesting. Uh, DSMK is going to be your Naga Siren. We have KZZ on the Tusk, and that's your Radiant team. Off for the Dire, we've got Ned, who's going to be playing at the Dazzle. Uh, Mindski Fangay, who's going to be playing your Queen of Pain Spot this tusk here although i think he saw her as well um so gonna just trade a little bit of right clicks there shouldn't actually miss anything here i don't think except for a little bit of damage going back and forth mason is going to be your trial ranger with a pretty slick little uh scarf there covering her mouth haven't seen that set in a cool minute um we've got moon meander who's going to be playing your lena and last but not least uh, at MSS Dota, who's going to be playing the Abaddon. So a little bit of uh, back and forth here at the very beginning. It does look like they reveal that there's a ward on the high ground here. Needs to be a little bit careful about the skewer coming out from the Magnus, but I think that if they d if he did end up leveling skewer, uh, skewer first, it would pretty much just be... Oh, that ain't good. Oh, look at the body blocks here. Oh my goodness, this is really, really not good. This is going to be a double kill, I think. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the Aphotic Shield messed it up a little bit. Needs one last hit, the miss uphill, and he goes for it. Of course he goes for it. Um, might end up paying the price for it, though. So freaking low, but with uh, the Naga Siren coming on in and drawing the creep, that was... <laughs> Mason is ever so upset about the uh, the situation over here. So two kills at the very beginning of the game, not looking absolutely wonderful for the uh, Dire, it's got to be said, but not necessarily an indication that the entire game is lost. Look like we are going to be seeing a Drow Ranger mid here. Um, unfortunately, Mason didn't end up getting that last hit. So this ends up changing things up significantly. Uh, we're going to be having this Queen of Pain up here in the top lane with the Dazzle. We also have the Tusk who's up against them. And meanwhile, down in the bot lane, we've got a Lena as well as an Abaddon up against uh, the tri-lane of the Anti-Mage, Lich, and the Naga Siren. Um, and for some reason, is this, I, this is very, very strange. Um, it, I, I don't know why the Naga's standing there, and now they're just <laughs> leaving him. Um, I kind of felt like one of them, oh, it's because the, the ward is blocked. Okay, of course. I was like, I feel like she should be pulling right now. Um, it is worth noting as well that when you're going up against an aggressive trialing like this as Dazzle rotates on down to the bot, um, you might not want to pull as much, particularly if you're going to be relying upon Lich to uh, continue to draw... Uh, uh, sacrifices there onto the creeps so not that necessarily he shouldn't do that because that's kind of his thing you know that's what lich wants to do is continue to sacrifice creeps the whole time through but um, it, it's just that you need to be more careful about if you're actually going to pull or not because if you do pull you might end up getting the creeps up the under there you get the, your anti-mage kill that's not a good thing nobody wants that goes on in immediately oh splash goes down ned is he going to be able to get out of their aphotic shield one last time that's going to keep him alive that abaddon and lane is really really solid for being able to uh, ensure that they, they, they don't end up getting taken out. So very, very well done there. And this is a little bit of the thing I was talking about, though is that you've kind of got this situation now where it's not necessarily the most orthodox lanes that you've ever had in your life, but it's all built around winning this laning stage. And then probably what they're going to opt to do with this lineup is just try and continue to snowball through, get kills around the map, eventually take towers and, and go from there. Um, it's less important now uh, necessarily, you know, having a great late term composition because games haven't necessarily been going super late. Uh, and if you take a look, they've been somewhat dominating the lanes here. You know, you've got Alina who's just about even with the anti-mage and farm. You've got the Quap and the Drow Ranger who are at 13 apiece. Um, the only one who's having a really good time is going to be the Sven, but I, I don't know. I think that they have a chance here to uh, to really sort of win with this. I, I, I don't want to call it completely unorthodox laning phase thing because, you know, Queen of Pain in a solo lane by herself isn't that weird you've got uh drow ranger by yourself that isn't that weird but it's just the fact that you have this farming lena down here in the bot lane in a, as a part of a tri lane to me that's kind of weird <laughs> personally i find that a little bit strange but i don't know what do i know um so yeah she's been the one who's pretty much been prioritizing farm there 
Abaddon and the uh, Dazzle haven't really gotten anything. Dazzle's picked up one last hit and a few denies as well. So doing a good job of trying to deny out RTZ just about as much as they possibly can. And he hasn't been getting the best farm in the world. Uh, it's a little bit tough so far. It's a very, very strange lane, though, it's got to be said. So Tusk now is going to continue to try and uh, get as much as he can out of this lane. Tosses out an Ice Shards here uh, in conjunction with the side pull to get the lane a little bit more under his control. But Queen of Pain still doing a really good job of making making sure that uh, everything's going her way pretty much. Over in the mid lane, we've got the Drow Ranger as well, who is uh, doing a decent job here. Looks like she is going to be going for uh, several of those Wraith fans like they talked about at the beginning of the game. Um, and I, I think that this makes a lot of sense. You just want to continue to get this Precision Aura as much as you possibly can um, up so that that way you can help out the rest of your lanes and make sure that you end up winning them. Uh, it, it, she's, it's, it's a little bit tough in this lane though because you've got the situation where the Magnus is going to be able to continue to nuke the creep wave. Um, it looks like she might be going for something here. I don't know if that's necessarily the best idea with the DD up, but honestly, she's making it happen. Another shockwave on out Gust as well. He might end up going down here. Oh, one last hit is all that he needs. Might end up actually taking her down. Yes, he does. Oh my goodness. Kill over there. GG <laughs> well played already. Um, and meanwhile, up in the top lane, uh, Queen of Pain making up for it a little bit. Able to take on down that tusk. Didn't even need to have to use Sonic Wave. Uh, might see if we get a rotation. I kind of wonder if if it would have been worth it for somebody to rotate on up to the mid lane to help out. Like, Abaddon had a TP there. I think that he probably could have saved her life. They were initiating for, like, a cool minute there. Um, but nonetheless, not going to end up being what happened. Uh, and we're just going to continue to see some farming taking place right on over here. So Drow back on up to full. It is going to force Magnus to head on back to base, but he's going to have a TP, so should be able to be out there relatively shortly. Let's take a look at net worth at this point. Magnus is sitting at the top at just under 3,000. You also have Queen of Pain below him, and then the Anti-Mage, and then the Lina. So Drow, despite the fact that she's been able to get a good portion of last hits and denies, uh, that death really set her back a good deal. Now we've got three heroes here rotating on in. They might try and uh, I, I kind of thought that they might be trying to go on in behind the oh god queen of pain gets another kill up in the top lane excuse me for missing that now she uses the sonic wave um unfortunately kzz is going to be the one uh bearing the brunt of that scream in his ear and uh not too happy about it you nobody likes to get screamed in their ear it's not a fun thing to have happen um, bot rune is going to be there. It is a regen as well. A little bit of an insert coming on off on the Lina is going to stop down the light strike array to try and create as much separation as possible. Naga's a little bit low, but don't think they're going to be able to take her out with the Abaddon rotating on over and tossing out a mist coil though. They're going to be absolutely fine. And Moonminder's going to continue to be able to just harass Arteezy just to the point of, of, of anger and <laughs> despair. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating leaning against something like this. A rotation coming on in. Tusk is in the middle mid lane might opt to go on in onto this drow here um it looks like he's setting up for something and she's over in this area it's going to be a little bit scary it's also nighttime she does have decent vision oh she's dead yeah there you go you're you're very dead uh a little bit unfortunate uses the rp not sure if that was necessary oh my god the gut just almost kept her alive though that was really close uh had it been a second earlier ned might have been able to shallow grave her and then it would have been fine but unfortunately not going to be the case drow ends up going down yet again um and even though she's the leader of the last hits at this point uh is going to be the fifth in terms of net worth and the lowest so far is actually tusk though so off lane uh versus the mid lane they're they're sort of even at this point oh my god queen of pain getting another kill up in the top lane every time i walk over here or walk away she's getting another kill blink up in another couple of seconds did he end up ulting the wrong creep i think he ulted a creep oh my god they're gonna be able to take down the magnus on the back of it as well kzz had no spells up no time for anything and queen of pain with the double kill is really making it happen 4k net worth at this point uh really really solid play there uh might see a snowball in a second no with the abaddon miss coil he's just gonna opt to cs with that ice shards and then head on back to base oh man so let's see uh drow ranger now two Wraith fans looks like she might be rotating uh into a yasha next no this is just gonna be her treads opting to pick up that uh that that elven skin band first and now with queen of pain rotating on over 
into the mid lane, we still have a whole lot of damage that could be coming out from the Sonic Wave. Does not want to reveal that she's here until Drow Ranger is ready to make something happen, uh, but might be a good opportunity to here. We'll see. The, the illusions are moving on forward. We also have a Magnus rotating in, so could get a two-person Sonic Wave here, along with Drow Ranger coming on in. Looks like they might try and go for it. Oh, no. Okay. Just going to opt to uh, yell in her ear one time. Does get the kill. That wasn't necessarily the best, unfortunately, and Tusk gets a little bit of payback up in the top lane. Yeah, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit funky. There, there were several other ways she could have potentially done that, but unfortunately, looks like Drow might get taken out here yet again. We do have another TP coming on in, but Walrus Punch is a little bit too quick. Cancels, oh my god, she's a little bit upset. Buys back immediately. Um, always good, <laughs> always good. And uh, unfortunately, that's gonna really set her back in terms of net worth. She's below the Lena now and below the Tusk. So in a matter of seconds, that advantage that they had is starting to dwindle away. Let's take a look at team net worth at this point. Uh, Radiant, after that little engagement or couple of engagements, I should say, uh, have really skyrocketed back, back into the lead. We also see another big advantage. Oh my God, Moonmeander's going down as well. This Tusk is really starting to make stuff happen. Um, Mason is unfortunately uh, not too happy about the situation. He keeps on eating all of the... Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not good. Nobody wants that. Um, just standing there as well. Um, I guess that the idea was that you, you, you really didn't have any other way of getting away, so maybe you just try and... I don't know, this is very strange. Um, I felt like they were ahead just a second ago. Oh man, getting away on almost nothing. Uh, and Ski Fan Gay is definitely very close. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll hop right into the next one. Probably